Hi, I'm Arkay here and welcome to my starter guide for state trees. It's, uh, go I'm gonna go fast because there is a lot to talk about. I, I don't want this video to be an hour long. So, <laughs> so let's just jump right into it. Um, first thing first, before I start, uh, I am using a tutorial FPP project that I made before in a previous video. Uh, link is down below in the description if you want to see how I make it uh, from scratch. And the second thing is I need to say what actually is the state tree so you have a good idea what you are working with. So a state tree is a new alternative to behavior trees. Uh, its main purpose is to be used with AI but unlike BT, so behavior trees, you can also use it with non-AI actors. So it's not bound to AI controller as uh, B BT is. Uh, another difference is that you don't have a separate blackboard holding values. So a separate asset, just anything that is in the state tree can be passed to, to tasks and they can communicate bet between each other. So very nice tool. You can use it with any actor you want because it's just a component and it's uh, very flexible and clean to work with. So it's now production ready as of 5.1 and you can enable it and work with it and it should be a nice, a nice implementation for your project. So let's start. How do you actually turn this on? Well, it's not turned on by default, but you need to go to plugins, type state tree and enable gameplay stats tree well state tree and state tree comp uh, plugin when you enable that just restart the editor and you're good to go uh, for this project i decided to actually use state tree with ai uh, so i decided to make an ai that follows the player and tries to um, annoy him and uh, apply impulse to the player so it doesn't reach the, the collectibles. Uh, right now it just follows the player, applies the impulse, waits a little bit and do the same again. So this is how it looks. There is the enemy, it follows and applies the impulse and waits a little bit. Alright, so that's what the state tree is gonna do. And uh, now let's go over how do you actually implement that uh, that state tree. First thing you need to do if you work with AI is to make a well AI character of type character. Uh, you need nav mesh as for any AI. So a nav mesh that uh, is applied to a surface. And then in your actor you need to add a state tree component. So state tree and uh, apply that well state tree asset that you're gonna make well we didn't do that yet but it's super simple just go to artificial intelligence go to state tree pick state tree component so you can apply it to an actor attach it to an actor of course not apply uh, if you enable any other plugins that use state tree then you would have more schemas but uh, we're not gonna talk about it it's just a, a starter guide so pick a component that's gonna make that asset, name it whatever you want, starting with ST. Uh, it's not important, but you should name your asset, assets appropriately. And if you make it, then just add this to, to the state tree. And your, your, your blueprint is good. So let's go to the uh, actual state tree and I'm gonna explain what does what. So this is the state tree. Let's go from left to right and I'm gonna explain what is what. Uh, schema, I already said what is schema. Schema is the type of state tree. Uh, for this state tree, I'm, we're using component, but it can also be uh, used with mess AI and it will have different schemas. And then you would have context actor class. So what is the class that we are going to use uh, for that state tree or what is the class that we are going to attach that component to. Uh, in my case it's blueprint enemy so I'm gonna pick blueprint enemy and it will uh, change actor context to that 
to that class. So now in state tree, we can uh, use that context and pick any variables from the blueprint that we want and use it across our, uh, our, our state tree. Uh, then we have parameters. Parameters are not um, actually editable by blueprints. Uh, it's just there to uh, have some variables that you can change in that component. So in blueprint enemy, we added um, movement speed. You add a parameter by clicking, of course, uh, a plus and just uh, renaming it to whatever you want. Ball test or whatever, changed uh, the type to what you want and you're good. So I'm gonna remove that because I already made a movement speed and that movement speed uh, you can set in that component uh, right here. Uh, it will not work per instance, but it will work per class. So if, for that same state tree, uh, you can apply it to different classes. So we can make, uh, I already make, made this before, uh, a child class of that enemy. And that child class can have a different value for that state tree. So we got 600 here and we got 500 here with the same state tree. So quite useful. I don't need that for this, this blueprint, but you may want to use it uh, for your project. And uh, another thing, well, I probably said that before, but this uh, parameter is not editable by blueprint. So if you go to event graph, take that state tree and try to change the parameter, uh, parameter, then you will have no options to uh, to change that. The state tree component has a few options that you can uh, use from that component. We'll uh, go to them in a little bit, but it's not much really. So state tree is mainly controlled by state tree itself. Okay, so let's move on. Evaluators is a tab um, that allows you to add a configuration class uh, to your state tree. So um, anything that needs to be done on tree uh, initialization, then you would do that in the evaluator. Uh, you can make a, an evaluator by you know, going to whatever folder you will, you will use for AI assets, uh, go to blueprint class and class search for state tree. Uh, state tree and you will want to do state tree evaluation blueprint base. If you click that, select it, then you will make a new blueprint and call it STE, whatever you want. And uh, it looks just like a normal, uh, normal blueprint that doesn't have much in it. <laughs> and you can uh, override uh, the tree start, tree stop and tick uh, functions in it. Uh, you'll mostly use probably tree start to initialize some variables and you can uh, do that right here. Mm, okay, so let's move on. Uh, let's add uh, an evaluation actor and I'm gonna show you how to um, actually uh, use that um, use that class. So what you want to do to use that class and uh, use the, the context actor that we made before, so, so this one, uh, we need to um, gonna delete that because that was uh, for a different purpose. Let's just clean this out and, and start from the, from the beginning. Uh, let's add AI pawn as a variable, change its class to BP enemy. So the class we are using for, for our AI enemy. And let's change the category to input. Now that's a fun thing that you can use in, in state trees. And that I don't think is, uh, is actually visible in any other uh, class <laughs> in Unreal is to actually use input and output and that will change the appearance of that variable in the state tree. So if we make, okay, let's start maybe with, with default category. 
Now we made AI pawn, let's make it visible and it will show us AI pawn. Uh, we can pick uh, something from, uh, from the level or we can bind that variable to, to an actor. But we can explicitly say that this, uh, this variable is only to be uh, entered or bind uh, and we can type input in the category and that will show us input right here. So now we can't actually pick anything from level. We can just bind that uh, value to something uh, in the state tree. So let's pick actor. And now with that actor, we can access some variables. Like let's see what variable we can have I guess we can access the, the mesh. So let's take that pH mesh. And if we wanted to uh, make it accessible to, to tasks and other um, nodes in the state tree, then we would uh, promote that to variable and make it an output. So that's it. On, in, on initialization, uh, we can make a new variable uh, that the tasks can access. But we don't have to do that. I don't actually use the evaluator for my uh, state tree because you can already access that from AI pawn. So if I needed that, then I could just take that AI pawn from the tasks and just use that. So. Uh, <laughs> Maybe there, are, there is some logic that you would uh, do in evaluator that you can't do in tasks, but I didn't find it yet. So let me know in the comments below if you, uh, if you actually need to use that. Uh, so we have that out uh, as output. And one uh, important thing to know, well, not that important, but uh, good thing to know is that if you use the category, then you don't have to make it instance editable to be shown in that state tree. So here we don't have that I open, but it still shows as an output. Let's make it more visible. It's called out. All right, so that's, that's how evaluators work. And generally, uh, that's how you pass variables between state trees. Well, not state trees, tasks between uh, tasks. So just variables in that state trees. Uh, okay, so let's close that evaluator and let's move on. Uh, we get the state tree uh, window. Let's actually delete that evaluator because we don't need that. Let's delete it. But I can't actually delete it. Well, state tree is pretty new. It still has some bugs. So if something bugs for you, then just restart it and it should be good. Okay, and now we have the middle part where all the logic happens. Um, this is a logic block and that's how you should think about it. And uh, the logic block consists of multiple elements. The first is the name. Name, of course, you, you name it whatever you want. Uh, the logic block can have a type. Uh, so in this case, it is just state. And honestly, anything that you uh, can pick here, except state is not necessary for, for state tree to work. Even the city sample that uh, the marketplace, Unreal Marketplace has, uh, the city sample, so the project with matrix city and stuff like that doesn't use anything except state. So don't worry about those, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about them at the end of the video. Next, we have a link subtree. Again, don't worry about it. It's only uh, important for a certain type of, of state, or of block. This is state and this is state. So I'm just gonna call those uh, blue thing is blocks, logic blocks, so we don't uh, get confused. Uh, next thing the block has is enter condition. So 
in order for the block to run it uh, it needs some sort of condition if we don't have conditions then it's automatically true and we can add conditions for for a state tree uh, you add a state tree by clicking just a plus and picking something uh, here. You can also make your own conditions that are not present here. And I'm going to show you how to do this uh, in a moment. Mm, so let's say we want to bool compare and see if the, the enemy or that, that AI actor is alive. With, with, we would take that bool compare. Um, left, we need to bind a variable and uh, I did that off screen when you didn't look, but I did that. I added a variable alive for, uh, for the enemy. Let's make it true. Compile and save. Then we uh, bind the actor alive boolean to the left uh, boolean variable. And in right, we just pick true and now it will uh, check for that condition to uh, to run uh, that state if it fails then it just goes back to root and well it loops but we can also add a certain logic to to stop that logic because one of the uh, few things that you can use uh, with blueprints with state tree is to actually stop logic and start logic so you can enable and disable the the tree using blueprints so that's <laughs> that's half of you half of those nodes uh, blueprints nodes that uh, you can use uh, all right so you can have a condition then you can have tasks uh, so something that the uh, logic block will do and you can have transitions. So what will happen when the tasks uh, are completed or fail or, or succeed? So yeah, those, those are three main things and how you actually make them. Well, uh, just how you made the ev evaluator. So let's go to blueprint class, type state tree, and let's start with condition. Condition is this one. I already made it. And it's going to be a string compare. Because this is something that is not present in, in the... Uh, bo -bo 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 -bo. In here, in that list, <laughs> I don't see any strings. So I made one myself. And it just takes a left string as an input right string and an option to uh, to enable case insensitive. So how I did that? Well, I made that with blueprint cl class. Uh, showed you before how to make it and just call it STC string compare. Then in that, we basically have one function to override and it's a receive test condition. Then I put uh, one variable as input, call it left string. Then make another variable called write string that is not an input and it's instance editable. Then another variable is insensitive as instance editable. Then just make that little code, plug it to a return node bool. And that's, that's basically that custom uh, condition that you can use right here. But for this case, I'm just gonna uh, make it a bool and plug that actor alive variable and write as true, of course. Uh, tasks, you make uh, like conditions. So just go to blueprint class, type state tree and do state tree task blueprint base. And that's the last node you can actually make from, from state trees. When you make a state tree uh, task, then you can, of course, and call it whatever you want, but I suggest STT and something. And then, uh, well, let's see how this task looks. 
Unfortunately, one thing that is missing, I think is missing from state trees, and I hope they are gonna add it later, uh, is the ability to make, um, make assets from that list, so you don't have to go to content browser or, you know, control space and add it. Uh, but an option to just go to the list and the button add another task, add another uh, condition, etc, etc. So that is thing I'm missing. I would like to see added, but eh, I work with what I work. Uh, these tasks, let's uh, look at that task. Uh, it's base find actor class. So in that task, what I want to do is to just have a class. So it's instance editable, so we can pick a class. Uh, get all actors of that class, get the first one and set found actor as an output. And return succeeded. This is also something that is buggy, but I'm gonna talk about it in a, in a moment. Um, and yeah, all the variables are shown here. You have AI pawn that you need to bind and you have a found actor that you can pass uh, further down the branch or the tree or whatever. Um, about variables, you can easily pass variables from left to right, but you can't really pass them from right to left. So if you want to um, actually use those variables you change down the line, so at the leaf state, so it has no child, children, then I would suggest to change that in the context actor. So just have a variable here you want to change and change that using uh, the context from the lift task. Uh, okay, so transitions. Transitions are super simple and uh, it's just you know, a trigger on state completed, succeeded, failed, tick and event. Event is buggy, I wouldn't use that, but you can if you really want, but it won't work from state trees. So events are something um, like it won't be called from a state. It, it can be called from any anywhere in the, in the game, honestly. Uh, it uses gameplay tags also, so <laughs> we're not gonna talk about it today, definitely. Uh, but I'm just gonna say it's it's a little bit buggy. You can't. Uh, there is an option to call it from from the state tree. Uh, it's state event, state tree send event. So you can make an event and call that, but this won't work, unfortunately. So don't don't use that but you can use it from a blueprint outside a state tree. So send a state tree event and make event here. And then if you really want to experiment and you have gameplay tags enabled, then you can use uh, that to send an event to a trigger and that will trigger a transition. But that is advanced, I just want it to be out there so you know it's there and you know what to use to make it work but i'm not gonna talk too much about it and i'm not gonna use it in my code i don't have an, a need for that so that, that's actually the, the the last node you can use with state tree you, you don't really have any other nodes uh, for for that state tree component okay so this this is done Tick will of course check uh, the condition here, mm, conditions on tick, uh, on state failed, it's just if you fail a state, the parent state, well not parent, the state above uh, failed, then just go through that transition and on state succeeded, if the, st the tree succeeds, then of course uh, make a transition. But for, for this node, the root is fine. 
uh, conditions. Conditions is like under conditions, so just pick whatever you want, and it will check the mm, transition going out of the logic node. So yeah, if uh, the logic goes in the node, then use under conditions, and if the logic goes out of the logic node, then use uh, this condition right here. Okay, um, let's move to um, probably those icons, so you know what is what. Uh, a task can have a child, and that task will not be selected directly if it has children. Uh, if it has children, then that uh, first child, if the enter condition succeeds, will be selected first. Uh, this icon here says that on next state succeeded, it will go down, and on failed, it will go up. So check the parent transition and use that instead. It will uh, show if you have on state succeeded transition, but on state failed, you have nothing. So it will just make that little uh, arrow up. We can see that here on state complete and it just goes down. If we pick uh, succeeded, then just failed goes up. So the same logic I added to attack and wait just has nothing, so it automatically goes to parent. Another thing to know that if you don't add transition to a parent logic block, then it will just make a warning that the transition is missing. So for uh, if you want to use um, a common transition at the parent logic block, uh, then make sure to, to make the transition because all of those uh, will make a warning that there is no transition available. All right, all right, all right. Now, I think we are ready to move on to tasks. How do you make tasks? Well, you make tasks as, uh, as I showed before. <laughs> Nothing uh, changed really. Okay, fail to resolve transition to state none at find player. We gotta change that. Uh, of course, root. Let's move that to root. Going back to, <laughs> to task, you make tasks as I showed you before, but there is one more thing uh, to say about tasks. Uh, Tasks are based on that function, receive enter state. And one thing that you can already notice um, looking at that is that the functions can't uh, have time nodes. So timers, delay nodes, retrievable delays, you can't have any of that in the function. So. Um, if you want to make a function that uses time, then you would have to make a little trick that will show that I will show you in a minute. But also this thing here is is bugged. So that trick I'm gonna show you will also uh, solve that bug. But it's not bugged in this particular case, in the find actor of class case. I know I am super confusing right now, but uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to explain it as best I can. Uh, because it took me a lot of tries to figure this out. And I am annoyed that this is bugged and it's not in the documentation, but I need to tell you so you don't uh, fall <laughs> into the trap uh, of not going, not knowing what the hell is going on. And yeah, I'm gonna slow down a little bit and try to explain properly what is going on. So that return node uh, has states. So a task, task can be running, can be failed, can be succeeded, and can be unset. 
but if you put that task to a leaf state, then that leaf state will only use the running state. All right. If, 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 if the state, if the logic block has a transition, then that transition won't actually happen because that state will always be running. But if that task is on the parent, uh, parent logic block, then it will work just fine. And the trick I show, I will show you in a moment will not work with that. And that transition, uh, well, it's not really that it won't work, but the time will be um, not functional. So if you add any delay nodes, timer nodes, then it won't work. So if you make tasks for parent logic blocks, then just use enter state and uh, put, this as, put this as succeeded and don't use any, any uh, time nodes in event graph. Don't use that. And if you make a task for a leaf node, so a state that has no children, so this is a children to that, and this is a parent to that, but this is not a parent to that. This is just the next state. So we have everything explained properly. Uh, so yeah, for if, if that's a leaf node, then you need to uh, make a, a trick that I'm gonna show you in a moment. So let's save that and let's go to that task that will have the logic I'm talking about. STT move to actor. Let's open that. Uh, move to actor and we have enter state. At enter state I am picking this as running because the succeeded won't work and the, the transition will be impossible but I also want to use time and delay that, uh, that state. So I make a new, uh, new function, new event rather in event graph and call it from that function. Uh, in that event, I want to use the timed AI move to node. Uh, I use AI pawn from input, target actor from also input and acceptance radius from instance editable. So we can just have uh, variables set directly uh, from the state tree. Then I make a new asset called uh, enumeration st states that has those states. And those this is another annoying thing. Uh, the state from here e state tree run status enum is not actually accessible from from <laughs> from variable types. Right, so e state tree run states. E state tree run state. It, it's not there without e. It's also not there. So like, why it's not there? So I make a new en enumeration st states. <laughs> Put those states from here to that. Just omitting uh, unsaid because it's it's not used any anyway. Make a new variable called state, put that enumeration here, and on event graph, I set it to, uh, well, whatever I want. So on, uh, when I'm running that AI move to, I, I set it to running. On success, I, run, I set it to succeeded, and on fail, uh, just failed. This is not important. This is just debug. You don't need that, but I use that for testing. And then on tick, this actually works. So on tick, I am picking what state I want. So if the state is currently running, then pick running. If succeeded, then succeeded and failed, and then it's failed. And you can use 
uh, that pin to, to select uh, those variables from here, but you can't have a state uh, and, and pick it here. So yeah, a few annoying things, but yeah. If you want to work with state trees, you need to know those tricks. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how you make a task. And uh, I guess let's move on. What is there more to be said? Mm, attack. Yeah, I'm gonna show you attack because why not? It's the last task. Uh, attack. My attack uh, also uses that trick because it, uh, it needs a transition to, to wait. So I make an attack. Uh, call interface call to an array pawn. So here it will execute that code. It's just apply radial damage. Pretty basic stuff that is uh, Unreal Engine stock. Then set a state to succeeded. This doesn't really matter. And on tick, I also use the trick and it works. And in FPP, so my player class. I just get on event radial damage, get the forward vector, and launch the character. That's it. So that's the whole logic behind the tree. And uh, what else can we say? Is that it or is that not it? I think with that knowledge, you will be able to, to make uh, some actual AI behavior, mm, but I'll have a little moment. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna drink some water and think about what else can I say. Uh, I guess I said that um, the parent state will not be selected directly. That's why we need to uh, not use the, the time nodes in that tasks. And the child, first child uh, that passes enter conditions will be uh, selected. But that this state is selected doesn't mean the, the parent task will not be called. So yeah, that's something to, uh, to know. And uh, okay, last thing, it's, it's more of a curious curiosity. <laughs> you, you don't need that, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Uh, type of uh, states. You can actually uh, have different trees in that in that window. The root doesn't have to be the only root. You can make a child state to pin something to the root, but you can actually add a state and will it will not be connected to root, and you can still use that. And how you use that? Well, let's call that test uh, or second root. And let's change type to subtree. Now that subtree can have parameters and you can... Um, you can use that tree from the, the root tree. So let's make a, a new uh, a new logic block, child state. Let's call it uh, test print. And in that test print, I'm gonna make stt print string. I made two, one OG for, uh, for parent tasks and print string for leaf uh, logic blocks. And that test print uh, will print a string uh, second root used. So this will no, never be called unless we actually link something to it. And the other um, types will help us with that. So how do we use that second um, tree? We need to make a, a child in the first tree. 
call it uh, say second root uh, call and let's make it a linked uh, linked logic block then we need to uh, pick linked subtree and this basically acts as a jump function from assembly if you if you know assembly so the execution goes to here and this basically jumps to the, sec the second root and continues execution from that point. That's, that's the whole function <laughs> of the linked and of the, of the subtree. So you can organize things better, I guess. And the last type uh, that is here is actually a group. And as you can see, the group is just a state that can't have tasks. So if you make every parent task uh, a group, then you would not have to make the different types of tasks that one uses the trick to have some sort of transition and the second one doesn't. Uh, so yeah, group is a state that has no tasks. And is that it? I guess maybe. Let's go to my uh, list of ST problems that I could uh, talk about. First is what parent state or task sh uh, should have only OG tasks. Yes, th that, that is the trick I talked about. The second is about the trick. Linked, uh, that is also uh, something I talked about. And child BPs. Also, you might be tempted to make a child task. So if you have a task and you, let's say, have an idea to make um, to make this reusable, so you don't have to make that in every task and also have some functions. Don't do that because it will also not work. I mean, that, that uh, logic block uh, will be almost unusable. Don't, don't ask me to explain what I mean. This video is <laughs> already too long, but trust me, just do trust me, bro. Don't, uh, don't do that. Don't, don't child blueprint class. Just make a new class using state tree and this blueprint base. Don't make new bases. And that, that, that's it. <laughs> okay, so that, that would be all that I wanted to say. It's honestly a, a, a starter guide. It has most of the information I have about state trees and my tips and tricks to make it work. I guess one last thing I could say is that if you want to use uh, variables from the parent tasks, you can totally do that. I do that here. So just make a call for a parent task and you can use the target actor, for example, that I made uh, in find player. So that is something that you can totally do. I forgot to talk about it, but that's that's almost it at this point. Uh, it's, uh, I don't even know how long it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. It's it's a lot of information, but I think it's, it's super useful and there is almost no videos about it. <laughs> and the documentation is also lacking. They, they won't tell you about types. They won't tell you about types, they won't tell you about bugs, it's just half the map is eaten by monkey, so yeah, that's all from me, <laughs> till the next video, uh, peace out.